for this assignment, I would like you to open Illustrator, document uh, that is like a portrait format, so up and down. Yes, I know. My computer died earlier. Okay, so it's a, a letter document. And um, before my computer died, what I was trying to show you here is you can go to View, Rulers, hide, or right now I have them shown, so I did Hide Rulers, but View, Rulers, Show Rulers, and that's Command R if you want to do it the faster way. And you'll see these rulers pop up on the top. Now, if you have your Properties window open, so if you don't, it's under Window, Properties, um, this is where you can kind of tinker around with the, some of the specifics of the rulers. So um, this is 8.5 by 11 sheet. Right now I have it set to inches. So you'll see along the top it starts at 0 and it should go up to... The reason why it doesn't go to 8.5 is because when you actually print a document from Illustrator, um, the printer can't print to the edge of the page, so they kind of compensate for that. It's called a bleed area, but that's a whole other conversation. So anyway... We have an uh, eight and a half by eleven sheet paper, and we have our rulers over here to help us. If you would rather see it in millimeters, centimeters, pixels, you can do that as well. But we're going to leave it at inches right here, um, and then we're going to do a guideline because I want to have a guideline in the dead center of my page. So I'm going to go over to my ruler. I'm going to click on the ruler and then drag over, and what that'll do is create a guideline. So. Um, here is, uh, I want to try and find the center. So you can, you can math if you would like, or you can press and hold shift, and that guideline should kind of, as you drag along, will sort of snap to that center point. So there is my center point. And next thing I want you to do, after you've created this document, after you've did a view, show rulers, and um, have your guideline in the center, you're going to go ahead and click your rectangle tool or hit M on your keyboard as a shortcut. And we're going to make a 3 inch wide by 5 inch tall rectangle. And the way to do that, doing it precisely, is you could try and use your rulers and click and drag so it's 3 by 5. Or you can just press one time with your rectangle tool and this little dialog box will pop up. So right now it's defaulting to a square. That's 1.3889 inches wide. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 3 inches wide and five inches tall. Hit OK. And there is my rectangle. So um, I want you guys to, right now it has no stroke and no fill. I want you to have a black fill, but uh, no stroke. Why is it doing this? This is the second time it's done this to me. I tell you, I want you to have a black fill. There we go. Okay and no stroke. And we want to have this rectangle in the dead center, which I think that I just, it snapped to the center for me. But if you ever are stuck and you want to have it centered and you want to have it exact, you can go ahead and do window, align, and you can use your align uh, window to help you get it centered. Now where is that drop down? Of course when I go to, there we go. Oh, no, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Oh, there we go. Align to artboard. So the artboard is just the main page. So I want to align to artboard, and then I can go like that. So that will that'll align it centered on my page as opposed to centered. Like when I tried to um, have it centered with the guideline, I actually moved the guideline too, and I don't want that to happen. I want it to just be perfectly centered. And so if it's aligned to right here, there's that drop down to artboard, I can also align it centered horizontally and vertically. So there we go. All right, next up, we're going to do some pen tool stuff. So go ahead and grab your pen tool. And I want you to just draw, starting outside of the rectangle, some shapes going into the rectangle and then back out. So this is entirely just playing around here with your, with your pen tool. You can make these wacky shapes. We're just getting familiarized with it. And for the 
for some clarity, I want you all to take a moment and just make sure that there's no, um, actually no fill. So hit the little none. And then for your stroke, let's go ahead and do white so we can kind of see what we're doing here. And then I'm going to hit V to end my, end my path because V is your selection tool. So you can just kind of toggle between P, which is your pen tool, and V, which is your selection tool. So I'm going to hit P, and I'm going to go ahead and draw, oops, I'm going to draw some uh, other shapes here. V to select. I keep accidentally clicking the wrong side of my mouse pad here. V and then P for pen tool. Oops. V back to B. V for selection, P for pen tool, all right. Now I'm getting sort of to the bottom here. Okay. So I have all these cool little shapes that are going into my black rectangle, and we're going to end up flipping those out in a moment. But I want it to be symmetrical, so I'm going to try and do this on the other side. So what I'll go ahead and do is click and press the top one. I'm press and hold shift, 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 shift. Or sorry, I'm holding shift and clicking, so more like click, 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 click. And then I'm going to um, do command C to copy, command V to paste, and while it's still selected there, I'll go to object, transform, reflect, and you can hit this little preview box. I want it to reflect that way. Hit OK, and then I'm going to drag them over here. I mean, there's more than one way to do this. This is the kind of the easiest way that I'm going to show you how to do. And try to get it to be matched up with your other side as well as you can. Looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to select everything. So you can click and drag over everything, or you can just do Command A, we'll select everything. And we're going to um, use our Pathfinder. So I already have my Pathfinder box open. It's part of a line and transform. But if you don't, go to window and find uh, your align palette and then it should show up with your align palette. Or no, sorry, here's your Pathfinder palette. So you can hit Pathfinder too. So either way, um, Pathfinder. And then you can see that there's shape modes and there's Pathfinders. There's a lot of different things you can do in here. Today we're just using divide. So what that will do is kind of use our our uh, strokes that we created and kind of cut through that shape underneath it. So we're going to go ahead and hit divide. And you can already see that these vector paths showed up and now they're kind of all unified, but they're cut. So this is where the fun part comes in. I'm going to grab my direct selection tool this time so I can directly select one part like that and we're going to reflect it out. So there's, there's more than one way to do this. So one way that you might already be familiar with is you selected this and you're going to go object, um, transform, reflect, and then hit OK. So then if you were to do this, you would have to, oops, you'd have to click and I'm going to go back to the, my uh, direct, or see, my Goodness gracious, sorry, having a moment. You can see that it's not the easiest thing to try and do here. So I keep accidentally grabbing a path rather than uh, the actual shape. I might have to zoom in here so I can see what I'm doing. All right, there we go. So I'm going to move that over and try to line it up. So that's one way you can do it. Um, another way you can do it is selecting just the shape. And you have to be careful to click right in the, in the shape because as you can see I kept accidentally clicking the path. So I'm clicking in the shape 
And then you do have a reflection tool in your toolbar here. Um, and it's underneath the rotate tool. So if I kind of find my rotate tool, it also has scale, also has reflect, also has shear. So I'm going to do reflect tool. You can also just hit O if you want to. That's the shortcut. And I'm going to click on the top and the bottom of that path, and there automatically flips it. All right, so that's another way to do it. So I'll go ahead and do my, my hit A for my direct selection tool. Select this shape. I'll hit O for my reflection tool, and then click the top and bottom of the path. So that's a lot quicker, um, but you can run into some issues with it if you're kind of click happy and click the wrong spots. There we go. A for my direct selection tool. Selecting the next, O for reflection, clicking the top and bottom of my path, flipped it out, A to kind of go back to my selection tool, clicking off of it, selecting my last, which I think I'm going to have to zoom in on this one so I don't accidentally click off on some path or something. Select that, O for reflection, click, click. All right. I'm going to do Command-0 to go back to my view here and I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. Um, so you can find, you can probably find another way to do these things that I did not show you here. Like If you had your direct selection tool you could almost press and hold shift and select each one of these and, and flip them all at once but then you'd have to move them around. So that is what I want you to do. Um, you want you to have both of these sides flipped out. So I'm going to try and do that really quick. That wasn't going to work. Okay. Right, that one I didn't quite have uh, aligned correctly, so I'm going to have to hand do that one. There we go. And then I don't know why I was having trouble, almost like this one was grouped with something. I don't know why it's only selecting, selecting everything when I try to select that path. Oh, perhaps this is why. Well, let's just see, this is a good learning experience, you guys. So, see how this path doesn't quite cross over the uh, threshold? So, that could be why I'm experiencing some sort of issue here. So, I guess learning experience when you go ahead and, and uh, draw your shapes, make sure you have plenty of a tail sticking off on the side, or you're going to run into this issue that I'm having. Um, yeah. All right. Lesson learned. So just make sure you have a long, a long tail on the end on both sides when you transfer them over or else you're going to have this messy issue, which I'm going to have to tinker with to figure out.